So the idea of using Ambroxol came from our investigations and, and those of others uh, on glucose rubicidase in Parkinson's disease uh, and how this increases the risk for Parkinson's disease. For instance, in the UK, about 12% of all Parkinson patients have uh, a so-called GBA1 mutation. So it's the commonest risk factor for Parkinson's disease and obviously people were interested in trying to understand why does it confer this risk and how. Um, the other interesting thing is that not, not everybody who carries a mutation gets Parkinson's disease, in fact only a minority, so that's another important question to answer. And as part of all of those studies we were looking at molecules that might uh, increase the activity of glucose rubicidase uh, to balance the effects of the mutation. Um, and work uh, in other laboratories many years ago in the context of Gaucher disease um, identified Ambroxol as a chaperone for glucose rubicidase. So we had a look at this uh, molecule and uh, found that it did increase uh, glucose rubicidase activity in all tissues, uh, including in our uh, rodent and non-human primate model brains. So that was uh, really very encouraging. Um, Ambroxol also has some other interesting uh, actions that are um, identified as improving the function of the lysosome. So altogether, we thought this was a very interesting candidate to try in Parkinson's disease. Yeah, so the small phase two study was a proof of principle study, it was called AIM-PD. It involved only about uh, 20 or so patients uh, with uh, Parkinson's disease. And the questions that we wanted to ask with that small study was, um, is Ambroxol uh, well tolerated over a six month period? Um, does it enter the nervous system as judged by uh, concentrations in the CSF? Uh, and can we see an effect of the drug on the glucose rubicidase pathway as determined by levels of protein in the CSF? So uh, the results of the study clearly showed that um, the drug does enter the CNS uh, at quite good concentrations, about 11% of the blood, uh, and it does significantly increase uh, glucose superside's protein levels in the CSF. Uh, the people with Parkinson's that were taking the drug tolerated it very well um, and had no significant side effects related to the drug. Uh, and there were no uh, in complex interactions with their medication. So it seemed like a good candidate to proceed. The uh, phase three study uh, called ASPRO-PD, uh, it's looking at the effect of Ambroxol in slowing Parkinson's disease over a two year period. Uh, this uh, study is supported by Cure Parkinson and, and other uh, agencies including Parkinson UK in the UK and the Black Foundation uh, and also from the United States so we're indebted to the, all of those people for uh, supporting the study and we will um, base the study in the UK at about 15 or so sites around the UK we'll be recruiting 330 people with Parkinson's disease for the study um, half of whom will have a, a GBA uh, mutant uh, and half will not. So we'll be able to look at the effect of the drug over a two year period in these people uh, and also determine at the end of it, A, whether the Ambroxol is effective in slowing Parkinson's disease down and also whether it works in those with and without uh, a GBA mutation. Um, our endpoint is the total UPDRS. Uh, it's a fairly standard endpoint. It involves motor, but importantly, quality of life issues too. So, uh, patient reported outcomes, which I think are an important endpoint for uh, studies now. So, they can uh, either contact us at UCL um, through me. Um, or they can encourage their patients uh, to enroll on what's called PD Frontline. Uh, PD Frontline is a UK-wide um, web-based recruitment um, for those with uh, people with Parkinson's disease. Uh, and they can, through that, obtain their um, GBA genotype, their GBA result, find out whether they're positive or negative, and uh, also to learn about um, joining the study.